In this video, I'm going to walk through two example horizontal projectile problems where something is launched into the air, not at an angle, but just horizontally, and then flies through the air, and they're only under the influence of gravity, assuming that air resistance is negligible. We're going to walk through one example quantitatively using values and numbers, and then for the last part of the video, this is something that you'd have to, to be able to do in AP Physics 1, you have to be able to think through things and problems symbolically also. So, let's look at the first problem. It says a snowboarder is launched horizontally with an initial speed of 14 meters per second. The snowboarder is six meters off of the ground below. And part A asks, what time does it take for the snowboarder to hit the ground below? So how much time do they spend flying through the air? And part B is, how far does the snowboarder go horizontally before hitting the ground? So we know once the snowboarder leaves the cliff, they're going to follow a parabolic path. And at some point, they're going to hit the ground below and spend some amount of time in the air. Well, whenever we think about projectile problems, remember, we know sp some specific things about how the snowboarder or any projectile will move horizontally and how they're going to move vertically. So when we start, we're going to write down any given information we know about the horizontal part of the motion or the vertical part of the motion in the y direction. So let's just think about the horizontal part of the motion. Um, what, what could we possibly know? Well, there's the horizontal displacement, the initial velocity in the horizontal direction, the final velocity in the horizontal direction, the horizontal acceleration, and, and how much time they're moving in the horizontal direction. Similarly, we have the vertical displacement or the change in vertical position, the initial vertical velocity, the final vertical velocity, the vertical acceleration, and the time. Let's go ahead and start with the horizontal information. Part B is asking us how far it travels horizontally. So that's something we don't know yet. So let's just put in a question mark. The initial horizontal velocity, initially once they leave the cliff, they're moving at a velocity of negative 14 meters per second in the x direction. So the initial horizontal velocity is negative 14 meters per second. Well, by the time they hit the ground, what's true of their horizontal velocity? Remember that as they're moving through the air, there's no forces horizontally in the direction of motion or against them. And so therefore, we found out that there's no acceleration in the x direction. The ex horizontal acceleration is zero. So if their horizontal velocity doesn't change, if they left the cliff moving at negative 14 meters per second, that means by the time they hit the ground, horizontally, they'll still be moving at that same velocity, negative 14 meters per second. And we don't know how much time they spend moving at that speed. When we're thinking about the vertical part of the motion, what's their change in vertical position? Well, they start six meters off of the ground. We're gonna assume that uh, the ground is a Y position of zero meters. So what's true of their change in position? If they start at a position of six meters and end up at zero, their change in vertical position is negative six meters. They have a negative vertical displacement. If the snowboarder is truly launched horizontally, that means no part of that speed is in the vertical direction yet until they leave the cliff. So at the instant they leave the cliff, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. They're not moving vertically yet. But as soon as they leave the cliff, we know that all projectiles in the absence of air resistance accelerate downward at negative 10 meters per second per second. And we don't know how fast they're moving vertically when they're at the ground below, so let's put that as a question mark. And we also don't know how much time they're falling so we're going to put delta t equals question mark. I'm going to use red to re represent the vertical part of the motion and blue to represent the horizontal part of the motion. So part A asks, you know, how much time does it take for the snowboarder to hit the ground below? And we could either use information from the horizontal part of the motion or the vertical part of the motion. The question is, in which part of the motion do we have enough information to solve for time? Well, we have three different kinematic equations to solve for time. And these equations, remember, they work for both the horizontal direction and the vertical direction. So these would all apply to the horizontal part of the motion. And if we rewrote those equations with uh, subscript y's instead, they would apply to the vertical part of the direction. So let me do that as well. So when we look at the vertical part of the motion or the horizontal part of the motion, it turns out that we only have enough information to solve for the time if we look at the vertical part of the motion. 
and we could go ahead and use this equation right here where the vertical change in position is equal to the initial vertical velocity multiplied by time plus one half times the acceleration multiplied by time squared. So let's go ahead and plug in the values that we know and solve for what we don't. So the change in vertical position is negative six meters. That's gonna be equal to the initial vertical velocity of zero meters per second multiplied by some unknown time plus one half times the vertical acceleration, which is negative 10 meters per second per second, all multiplied by time squared. And since the initial velocity in the vertical direction is zero, zero times t is just zero, so that part of the equation goes away and we get negative six meters is equal to one half times negative 10 meters per second each second, all multiplied by time squared. So if I do a few algebraic steps to solve for time, I'm gonna multiply each side by two and then divide by negative 10 meters per second. And so we get two times negative six meters, we're doing this on the left-hand side, divided by negative 10 meters per second each second. Okay, that's all gonna be equal to t squared. And if I want to solve for time, I have to square root this whole thing, that is gonna be equal to t. So it turns out that time is equal to two times negative six meters divided by negative 10 meters per second per second, and then we have to square root that whole thing. Well, you can see that the negative signs cancel. We're gonna get two times six or 12. 12 divided by 10 is 1.2, and the square root of 1.2 is just 1.09. So it turns out that time is just equal to 1.09 seconds. That's how much time they spend in the year. That's how much time it takes to fall vertically six meters, a little more than one second. So we could go ahead and add that to our given information. Vertically, they're falling for 1.09 seconds. And stop and think about it for a minute. If they're falling for 1.09 seconds vertically, what else is happening? Well, they're also moving horizontally. So this is the only value that's gonna always be the same for both the X and Y direction. The time that they're moving vertically will be the same as the time that it's moving horizontally. So we also now know that the snowboarder will be moving horizontally at a speed of 14 meters per second for a total of 1.09 seconds. And that's gonna allow us to solve for the horizontal displacement of the snowboarder. So that's part B. How far does the snowboarder go horizontally before hitting the ground. Well, we're talking about horizontal part of the motion, so we're gonna to have to use one of our three kinematic equations right here. And let's just go ahead and use our displacement equation. So the change in X position or the horizontal displacement will be equal to the initial velocity in the X direction multiplied by time plus one half times the acceleration in the X direction all multiplied by time squared. So we get displacement is equal to initial velocity, which is negative 14 meters per second, multiplied by time. How much time are they moving at the, the speed? Well, we found out it's about 1.09 seconds. We have to add one half times the acceleration. And remember, in the x direction, there is no acceleration. The velocity stays constant. So we plug in zero meters per second per second for the acceleration in the x direction. We're going to multiply that by the time of 1.09 seconds, and we have to square that. But zero in this term, one half times zero times anything, all this term just goes to zero, which means the horizontal displacement will be equal to negative 14 meters per second times positive 1.09 seconds. Turns out that our displacement is negative 15.26 meters because the second units end up canceling out. So the snowboarder spends 1.09 seconds in the air and in that time travels 15.26 meters in the negative x direction. So if you're in AP Physics 1, go ahead and keep listening uh, to find out how we do this same example problem now symbolically. So we have a snowboarder now with an initial velocity of v uh, at some initial height h and we again want to know what the total displacement is. Just like our quantitative example, we're gonna first have to figure out an expression for the change in time before we can find a symbolic expression for the horizontal change in position. So let's go ahead and go through our given information and plug in symbols for things that we know and question marks for things that we don't. 
So the initial velocity in the x direction is going to be negative v. v is going to represent the speed and it's moving in the negative direction. There's zero acceleration in the x direction. And so the final velocity will also be negative v. And we don't know time. Well, what about the vertical part? They start at height h. So the change in vertical position or the change in y position will be negative h. Remember, it's a negative vertical displacement. The initial velocity in the y direction is zero. The final velocity in the y direction, we don't know. And the, we know that the negative acceleration or the acceleration in the y direction is negative 10 meters per second per second, right? Well, we can use a symbol for that, which is just g. g, remember, is the Earth's gravitational field strength, but that is the same also as the size of the free fall acceleration of any object on the Earth. And so instead of negative 10 meters per second per second, we can plug in negative g. Because g is a positive 10, and we know the acceleration is negative. And again, we don't know what the time is, but if we want to figure out a, a symbolic expression for the horizontal displacement, we first need an expression for the time. And just like before, we're going to have to go ahead and use the vertical information or an equation for the vertical direction to solve for time. So let's just write out the equation that we used before. So the change in y position is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by time plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction multiplied by time squared. So remember, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero, so initial velocity times time, that just goes away. And so we get delta y equals one half times a y times t squared. Well, let's put in variables in here that we're allowed to use, which would be h, v, and g. So the change in vertical position will be negative h, that's our displacement in the negative direction. That's equal to one half times the acceleration in the, the y direction, and that is negative g, and that's all the multiplied by t squared. So let's start rearranging. I'm going to Let's see here, multiplied by two, so we get negative two h equals negative g, all multiplied by times squared. I wanna get t by itself, so I'm gonna divide each side by negative g. The negative g cancels out here. And we get that two h divided by g, notice the negative sign cancels out, there's one in the top and one in the bottom, is equal to time squared. Or, since we want an expression for time, we get that t is equal to the square root of 2h divided by g. And so this would be like a symbolic expression for part a up here, which was, well, how much time does it spend in the air, but only in terms of symbols. Well, if we want to find the horizontal displacement like we did before, we had to use our horizontal displacement equation. So it's the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half times the acceleration multiplied by time squared. This is all information about the horizontal part of the motion. Since the horizontal acceleration is zero, just like before, that whole term goes to zero. So all we need to do is so multiply the initial velocity multiplied by time in terms of the variables we're allowed to use. And so the initial velocity in the x direction is negative v, so that speed in the negative direction, and we multiply by time, and we said time is equal to the square root of 2 times h divided by g. And so an expression then for the horizontal displacement is equal to negative v times the square root of 2 times the height divided by the size of the acceleration of gravity. And there's a symbolic expression for the horizontal displacement.